All right, Ron, we're back from break, and there you see in the ring against the Backseat Boys, it's IPW's own Mike Sullivan and Scoot Andrews. They've come in as a tag team. No, these guys don't exactly team up very often. There's no love lost. But Trinas and Johnny Cashmere, after wrongful death, got torn away from this match. Oh, wait a minute, Ron. We're going to have to go to that story in a minute. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, beautiful double-team maneuver by Sullivan and Scoot Andrews. Drops both guys right in their face. And as I was saying, they wanted to challenge IPW's best. Well, you got two of IPW's best in the ring right now as Johnny Cashmere is finding out just how you can get lit up by chops here in IPW. He's getting his chest turned to hamburger and oh, they drop nice. Trey Nassin head first into the groin and, and he Johnny seems Cashmere. to like it. Oh, I don't think he likes it one bit. The one thing that you can't accuse these guys, I, I'm not even going to go that route. You can't accuse of them of being anything but all but oh. look at that huge double close on and both of them are absolutely leveled. We got three former competitors from the Super 8 in Mike Sullivan Scoot Andrews and Trent Acid and Johnny Cashmere would have been a Super 8 competitor if he wasn't blackballed up in that neck of the woods by a certain promoter. But they were in here. They wanted anybody. They demanded anybody from the back since Wrongful Death was attacked by Frankie Capone and Python. They said Wrongful Death gave up. They said Wrongful Death don't have the guts and they challenge anybody in the dressing room. And look at this. And look what they get. Speaking of dressing room, the Backseat Boys had made their way to the back area. They tried to pull a Wrongful Death as they called it. They wanted no part of Scoot Andrews and Mike Sullivan, but the former IPW heavyweight champions now as a tag team. I tell you what, Rod Nimi, they would have none of that. They go and they get these quote-unquote independent superstars. No, not the same type of independent superstars as the ultimate ones in York and Matthews, but their Trent Acid just get dropped right in his face by Scoot Andrews, and their Johnny Cashmere gets exactly the same treatment. Let me tell you something. You wanted a challenge? You wanted the best we have to offer? Well, they're in the ring with you right now, and you're not doing very good, backseat boy. The Backstreet Boys come into IPW's home territory of the Florida WrestlePlex. They come in and want to lay down the gauntlet and lay down challenges. It wasn't enough that they challenged for the IPW Florida Unified. Look at that huge vertical suplex. Look at the strength by Mike Sullivan, the stamina. He's holding Johnny Cashmere up there for what has been close to 30 seconds now, and he's not ready to drop him yet and absolutely levels him. That was an unbelievable technique. It doesn't matter if it's technical. It doesn't matter if it's hardcore. You've seen the backseat boys. You can see the level of violence and the level of pain that they can tolerate. But now they're in there with some of the best technical wrestlers IPW has to offer. And I'll hate to say it, but they're hanging right with them. Come on, Sullivan. Put it on them. Hey, I tell you what, they might be hanging right with them. Oh, nice double team tag team maneuver again. Trent Asset comes right off the top rope. Now tries to pull his Shawn Michaels routine, gets a little cocky. Very, very lucky Mike Sullivan was stunned, or you would have been eating your words and your gestures and your gyrations right there, Trent Acid. Gentleman Jim Bragg gets down there for the two count. Jim Bragg is IPW through and through. And the truth is, Trent Acid and Johnny Cashmere, they come in here as arrogant as can be. They come in here claiming that they're not used to some dump, as they refer to it, like the WrestlePlex. They're used to wrestling in superstar-type venues like Korokin Hall in Tokyo, Japan, because they are international superstars. They're used to wrestling up at Viking Hall, otherwise known as the ACW Arena with Combat Zone. The truth is, we don't care. We're not impressed. This is IPW. This is the WrestlePlex. And just like on June 8th, we're going to absolutely tear up the WrestlePlex. And if the Backseat Boys got any balls, they're going to come back down here on June 8th, and they're going to get in the ring with IPW's best. I tell you what, Ron, I don't know exactly when those guys are going to be back, but they were talking a lot of smack that they would be during their tour here in Florida. Nice double Russian leg sweep. And this is what I'm talking about, the cocky double team maneuvers. It's nice to see that they have great tag team maneuvers there, like the double drop kick right to Mike Sullivan's noggin. But I tell you what, you might win a few more matches when you're going against guys you don't know anything about if you stop some of the shenanigans and the horseplay or the tomfoolery, as Ron Nimi likes to call it, before your moves and just execute them and try to get the one, two, three, which is exactly what this is supposed to be all about. Let's get one thing straight. I can tolerate shenanigans. I can tolerate just about anything. Tom Foolery, leave it in Big Japan. Leave it in Combat Zone, because we don't want none of it here, Tran Acid or Johnny Cashmere. Mike Sullivan and Scoot Andrews are going to have none of it. And the gentleman, Jim Bragg, 73 years old. He's in there. He's constipated. He's raising the hands of Mike Sullivan saying, come on, brother, please don't give up to these guys. They're prima donnas. We don't like them. Do what you can to win. The WrestlePlex crowd is behind you. And Aaron, I haven't breathed in over a minute, so please take over from this point. 
What's that, Rod Nimi? All right, Rod, here you see, look at that nice throwdown maneuver there by Trent Aston. I tell you, these guys have taken a beating from Mike Sullivan and Scoot Andrews, but they keep on coming. They seem to have an endless supply of energy, too. Oh, almost a three count. I thought for a second that Mike Sullivan and Scoot Andrews were going to go under to this team. I tell you, as much as I love Scoot Andrews and Mike Sullivan, you wouldn't have been able to consider that an upset. As you said, the Backseat Boys, one of the top tag teams in all of wrestling here in Japan, anywhere on the independent scene that you want to go. And the fact that Mike Sullivan and Scoot Andrews are in there holding their own with them as they are right now is a testament to just the ability that these guys have. We may not have the reputation, or I should say Scoot Andrews and Mike Sullivan may not have the reputation up north that they should, but they're showing exactly why they should against the Backseat Boys. And there Johnny Cashmere just gets laid out by his own partner as he overestimated just how out of it Mike Sullivan was. It doesn't matter if we don't have the reputation. The truth is I don't want the reputation that they've got up in the Northeast. we got to fight for everything that we get. Any credit that's given to the great town IPW, we got to fight and we got to earn it. Did you Trent see Mike Sullivan's athletic ability there? He should have got dropped oh. on his back, stayed right on his feet, and now he plants Trent Acid, kind of inverted powerbomb style, right into his partner Johnny Cashmere, and hopefully this will give him a chance to tag out the Scoot Andrews, and hopefully Team IPW can pull this one out. Let's give credit where credit's due. The the truth of the matter is the booking committee of IPW, they're willing to bring in people like Trent Asin and Johnny Cashmere, the Backseat Boys. They're willing to give them a title shot right here in the WrestlePlex. Combat Zone Wrestling, you don't see them bringing in any IPW stars like Scoot Andrews, who's absolutely destroying the Backseat Boys single-handedly. Oh. You don't see them bringing in talent like this because they're afraid of IPW. If we got to bring them here to show them who's the best of the best, IPW is the best, and we'll Look keep at bringing this. them in. Oh. We'll absolutely level. Johnny Cashmere and Scoot's just getting started. Come on, Jim Bragg. Oh, nearly man. a three count, but Trent Acid still in the ring, able to break it up. Gentleman Jim Bragg, I guess when you're 78 years old, you kind of lose control of a lot of things, and he's lost control of this match right now. Not too often that he loses control of matches like this. Oh, oh beautiful double choke slam by Scoot Andrews and Mike Sullivan. What teamwork for these guys who never ever team up together. We just saw them here a couple of weeks back against each other in a match that also involved Christopher, Christopher Daniels and Tony Mama Lou. Huge Yakuza kick by Trent Acid in the face of Scoot Andrews. That is his finishing move, the Yaku Yakuza kick. And here's the T gimmick, as they call it. Lays out Mike's over world. One, two, <laughs> not quite yet. Good job, Scoot. All right, Scoot Andrews able to break up that pinfall attempt. I tell you what, Ron, I was surprised when Scoot and Mike came out. Equally surprised that they've been able to hold their own as well as they have here. Not taking anything away from them individually, but they are not a normal tag team. And they're going up against guys that have been teaming for three-plus years. And right now, they've got Johnny Cashmere right where they want him. Oh, Scoot is in nature. Two, three. There it is, Ron Nemi. Backseat boys, you wanted the best. There you go.